It was another video I wanted to watch. I don't know if I'm watching this whole thing though, because I'm ready to get to the games. But let's see. It's undeniable the now lucrative esport industry success has immensely influenced the online world, with many of today's most popular content creators starting off as pro gamers. A definitive trait of the esport community. Yeah, what people need to know. That is, he, he just. Uh, with it. It, it irritates my soul. I ain't gonna lie. Emotions run high. Winners boast and losers see. And generally, this beef ends in nothing more than a Twitter squabble. But unfortunately, in a handful of instances, a player's insatiable drive to win has ended in tragedy. And it's mm. these disturbing cases that we'll be looking at today. Okay. From a Call of Duty player turned sword wielding killer to a. Oh no, nah, bro! Look, he look. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, they both do. They look like, you know, niggas be having that look. Like, they got that look. Like, yeah, you know something off of his head. Like, he look a little crazy. Like, he'll do something. He look like any given moment. You say the wrong thing. Backpack open. You feel me? Other dude, like, why their eyes always gotta be big, too? Like, like, what is you staring at, bro? Like, there's enough sight in the world for everybody. You can look. <laughs> you ain't gotta open your eyes that wide. He looked the same in every picture or video too. That's the crazy part. Today's video is sponsored by Rocket Money. Look, with everything that's crazy. Ma that's the nigga that did the Madden shootout. I thought it was a whole different dude. Shooting at a game tournament? Whoa, yeah, no, dead ass. And wins on the big stage takes home not only the cash prize, but all the I ain't gonna lie, I'll be damned if I get shot over a League of Legends game. Oh god, or a Dota game. Oh me, I need a retry. Exchanges between rivals seen both online and offline. It's extremely uncommon for a gaming feud to turn violent, and even more rare for one to turn deadly. Which brings us to the story of Madden player David Katz. At the time of this story taking place, David Katz was a 24 year old man from Baltimore, Maryland. Katz could be described as a troubled individual from a well off mm -hmm. family. David's father was a career engineer for NASA, oh, and his man. mother was a state toxicologist. This family was said to have had a drawn out and traumatic divorce that deeply affected David. As a young adult, but look at that nigga haircut. I think it was the haircut that affected him, I'm be honest. Occasions related to mental illness. The young man mm. apparently suffering from frequent psychotic bouts. David was prescribed mm. the medication Risperdal at a young age that helped curb some of his symptoms, but lapses would still occur. Documents Hell no. Family divorce also speak on the young man's mental health struggles. I ain't gonna lie, bro kind of look like, he kind of like Red Skull. Uh, you know what I mean? Just... Treated for schizophrenia and that David would quote... <laughs> I would just, I would just keep talking, bro. I'm, I'm just letting it go. Documentation also says that David Katz once punched a hole in his mother's door when his game controller was taken by her. He also oh, he was one of those. My Xbox Live! Mom! David struggled with mental health throughout his formative years, and only one thing really brought the young man joy, that being Madden. As a child and teenager, David found refuge in the Madden video game franchise, playing these games religiously hours upon hours a day. In the Madden community, David would become a fierce competitor and was known throughout the community by his various gamer tags, including Ravens Champ, Dread, and Texas Have a Heart Attack. David would eventually begin entering Madden tournaments and found success in 2017 when he won the Madden 2017 Championship. Bro, don't even smile normal, bro. You seen that nigga smile? Hold on. Bro got the same default face for everything, bro. He probably eat, sleep, wash his ass just like this, bro. He have conversations like this. He drive like this. He playing video games like this. He damn sure doing everything else like this. He probably eat, like, literally eat like this. Like, straight face the whole time. That shit is crazy. That nigga has, like, no sign of emotion. David would eventually begin entering Madden tournament. Actually, he does have emotion. Niggas walking around the circle. He got the crazy emotion. Anger. Anger. Look! Look at the smile! He not even smiling for real. Look at him. 
Bro, that is not a smile. He's trying to smile. Like, it looked like his face cracked a little bit when he was trying to do that. An excerpt written about this event describes David's apparently clutch victory in what some are calling the most exciting moment in all of the 2017 NFL. No, if it's a fighting game, I'm locked in. No, I feel that. If it's a fighting game, I'm like, I'm like, I'm probably making the ugliest faces ever. But bro, face is like normal for everything. It's just... That's how he smiled too. The fuck was that? You know? Look, he can't even get hyped. That even his hype look crazy. Like when he's getting lit, he said. Ah! What is wrong with this nigga, bro? What is wrong with him, bro? Look. Look. And while many competitive gamers celebrate their victories with Bro is screeching at the game, bro. A ridiculous pop Why is bro screeching at the game? You won. Be happy. Don't screech. Commentators have described David as not showing emotion when he plays. See what I say. Bro. Bro, I told you these type, bro, these kind of people, they are dangerous. Like they're scary to be around. Like it kills the vibe too. Like it's like the, the energy is not. Proficient at Madden. Well, he ain't got, he, he got confidence too. Well, he ain't confident. That was cockiness, but that's kind of uh. none of those tournaments are important. But day two of a 2018 mm. Jacksonville, Florida tournament is critical. The date was August 26th of 2018, day two of competition for the local. And that wasn't that too long ago. I forgot about that. Well, now I forgot about it. I remember it, but like, I thought it was longer. In front of TV and computer screens, donning headsets and preparing to eliminate one another in a tournament where the winner takes all. A $5,000 cash prize as well as a shot at entering the marquee event in Las Vegas, Nevada. And the prize for that marquee event was $125,000. These Madden qualifier events attracted some of the highest level Madden players from the country, and thousands were watching this live on Twitch. The venue hosting this event was the Good Luck Have Fun Game Bar. And as the day's Madden matches commenced, let's just say David wasn't playing his best. Bro, look at this, fuck, this fucking haircut is gonna piss me off, I'm not gonna lie. This haircut gonna make me mad. Bro, this haircut gonna make me mad. Why are you playing Madden with that haircut, bro? It's One making me mad. That had beaten David said that Cash refused to shake his hand after a loss. Quote out. Safe. Is it safe? Is it safe? I'm going to say safe. My bad, bro. Thank you for the follow, though. I appreciate it. Yo, bro, can I send you my picture for you to see if you can pull or not? What you mean by that? <laughs> what, do you, what you mean by that? I'm a little confused. Concerning behavior from David was witnessed Bro. after losing against another player named Bug, and this loss would knock David out of the tournament. And needless to say, he didn't handle it well. He reportedly had an outburst, wouldn't shake Bugs's hand, and stormed off angrily. Most likely thought that after storming off, David had packed his bags and went home. But in all reality, that nigga went to the back trunk. Pick up some guns. David was wow. All over Madden too, like imagine, bro. With two loaded handguns, one of which had a laser sight. At 1:30 p.m., two hours into the tournament, David Cash re-entered the venue and rained down 12 shots upon the establishment, sending a foray of bullets towards competitors and spectators. David's first shot. Wow, this nigga is nuts. On live stream, with the red dot from David's laser sight being seen pointed at the chest <gasps> of 22-year-old gamer Elijah Clayton. Gunshots and screams. Bro, imagine that though. Like, what the fuck? Bro, that's crazy. That's nuts. No, like, that's literally nuts, bro. Like, that's literally crazy. Like, imagine being in a gaming tournament playing Madden and the fucking red dot lasers on you, like, just. 
What the fuck, bro? Oh, no. Nah. Yeah, hell no. Nah. Making a mad dash for survival. A live stream from the tournament captured audio of the chaos that followed. Oh, what are you doing with it? Tables were flipped. Yo, what the fuck? Like, that's deranged, bro. Like, that's literally, bro. Did you hear what did he shoot me with? Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. from David as the shots rang out throughout the room. Some of those who made it to cover would make frantic calls to 911, prompting a police and SWAT response to the ongoing active shooter situation. Sheriff deputies arrived to the Madden tournament around 1.30. Oh, that's fucking crazy. See, I never looked too in-depth into that situation because I don't like, you know, that's fucking nuts. situation on Twitter. I got out. Police escorted me. I'm done going to any Madden events, not EA majors with security. Eventually, exactly. the fire from inside the venue would stop. That being because David had taken himself out. Officers and firefighters would then begin... A I, I ain't gonna lie, all this over Madden? For victims, ...and they would soon discover the bodies of the deceased. Those individuals being 27-year-old Taylor Roberts... Oh, man. ...year-old Eli Clayton... And oh, the one with the fucking laser that was on him. Damn, that's so sad, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I didn't think he passed. I thought it just like... I thought that was him lifting up the gun, so it kind of like skimmed past him. Like the laser skin past him. I now that I know this though, I know he didn't want to know that that was the, that happened to him. That's crazy, bro. That's so sad. For another eleven wounded individuals who would all survive. One of these survivors had actually been shot in the chest, but luckily was stabilized due to the fast response time from authorities, EMTs, and fire departments. The sheriff's department. That's fucking crazy. Gave updates on what had happened. Later that evening, family members of the surviving victims tweeted out updates to show that the survivors were in stable condition. EA Sports would put out the following statement in regard to the shooting. The tragic situation that occurred Sunday in Jacksonville was a senseless act of violence that we strongly condemn. Our most heartfelt sympathies go out to the families of the victims whose lives were taken today. Yeah, your chance by going to train up a bit, bro. Y'all can't hear it? No, we watch. I'm reacting to like when gamers kill. I guess it's like a little esports thing. That I guess like murders that happen in esports. I don't know. This became an international news story, and the country came together to support those who had been involved in this shooting event. That's One fucking nuts, bro. The man who was present at the shooting itself, Toshiba Sharon, would say that he wanted the families of Eli and Taylor, the deceased victims, to know that they didn't die alone, and that they died with family. That family being the Madden community itself. I just wanted to pay my respects to the family and just let them know that they're... I get it, you saying whatever you can, but like, I feel like that's such a... Because, bro, that same community breed somebody that... I'm not saying it's the community's fault. Let me not do that. But, like, come on now. Like, of new gamers and gamers. that wouldn't make me feel any better. I ain't gonna lie. That's fucking insane, bro. In particular saw that's insane. That wouldn't have made me feel any better. I ain't gonna lie. Maybe that's just me, though. Sales and merchandise connected to gaming. Competitive mobile gaming rose to popularity thanks to battle royale shooters like Fortnite and Call of Duty. Bro, 22 years old, bro. He, he young as hell. You feel me? Like, that wouldn't have made me feel any better. The subject of our next murderous gamer, 18 year old Brazilian man, Guilherme Alves Costa. Guilherme played Call of Duty mobile. Hey, look, I'm telling y'all. I am telling y'all about that look, bro. That, that big eye, blank face, no expression. Like, bro. You gotta watch out for those people, bro. Like, niggas barely even lift their eyebrows unless it's like this. Eyebrows only go up. They don't go no other way. You can't. You can't. They don't do that. They don't do. They don't do none of that. They just. Looking crazy. I just saw Kyle Mobile still play. A lot of people still play that game. It's a good game. Yeah, bro. Looked like one of the. Exactly. It's that look, bro. That he did get along with was a female gamer from a rival Call of Duty mobile team. While playing COD Mobile, Galerme. <laughs> what young boy say? Mine, bitch! Yo, 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 yo! <laughs> yo, yo, yo! That nigga. <laughs> the 
team frequently competing against Galermay's team. Through their Call of Duty rivalry, Galerme and Ingrid apparently had gotten close to each other and had met in real life on at least one occasion, with Ingrid visiting Galerme's house and his mother commenting that the two seemed like good friends. It's unknown if there was a romantic element to this relationship, but mm. needless to say, the two enjoyed each other's company. At least, it seemed that way on the surface, as what we soon find is that Galerme's motive for becoming close to this woman wasn't to seek romance or friendship, it was to kill her. On February 27th... Oh, this nigga is insane, bro. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, yeah, turn the vid up a bit. Tori, you're the only one saying turn the vid up. Nigga, turn your phone up. Is the vid low for y'all, the rest of y'all? If it is, I turn it up. Because I did. I just adjusted the audio. I think it's pretty loud. It's not supposed to be as loud as me. At his Sao Paulo home, under the premise that the two would be playing Call of Duty in person together. What Ingrid I'm on PC. You got some weak-ass speakers then. Weak-ass speakers. Is that Galerme if you're using a, uh, if you're using a PC with a desktop, though, then, yeah, I don't really have two speakers in that great. Unless you got headphones on. If you got headphones on, then I... For close to two weeks to lure no, he's tweaking. Weak-ass headphones. That nigga got... Nigga got beats by annual AA. That nigga got... Beats by Island Boy. <laughs> In a sickening display of depravity, Galerme <laughs> would then record footage My bad. of the dead body. Oh, what? Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm too busy making jokes and shit. In person together. What Ingrid didn't realize is that so a friend. So she probably was trying to get with, bro. Bro, get off my budget, Sonny. <laughs> she was probably trying to get with, bro. But bro was like, nah. Like, what? Are you serious, bro? Niggas are insane, bro. Like, well, he's not a nigga, but like, you know, people are. I don't, get, I don't get this train of thought. I never will, and I hope, you know, I hope other people stop getting it. That the two would be playing Call of Duty in person together. One six ads, L. God damn. Is that Galerme had been plotting for close to two weeks to lure her over and kill her. After Ingrid arrived, Galerme would lure the young woman into his bedroom. Shortly after, the deranged man would procure a sword and began violently slashing and stabbing at the woman, continuing his assault. I was going for the kill. In a sick he wasn't there for love. Yeah, that shit is wild. Galerme would then record footage of her dead body after committing the murderous deed. In oh this shit! Nice day for life footage, oh, was that supposed to be right the there? Let's switch activity feed. Looking for a specific. Maniacally chuckles to himself. This gruesome footage was later uploaded to a WhatsApp group that Galerme's oh, editing here. friends used. Galerme comments, "You're thinking it's ink or that it's editing or something, but it's not." In this grisly video, what the fuck? Galerme, he would also add some commentary, claiming that he had written a 52-page manifesto that would explain why he committed his killing, but he didn't elaborate on the motive directly. I really killed He's by Swiss. <laughs> he think he playing gun game. No, dead ass. No, this man deserves the penalty. No, dead ass. Bom, vocês estão achando que é tinta, que é montagem, algo do tipo, mas não, não é. Eu realmente matei ela, entendeu? E, bom, eu tenho um livro também, e vi que o pessoal tá divulgando já esse meu livro. Why is he so normal? But you see what I mean? These niggas be deranged, bro. Like, th this training of thought is not even close to normal. Like, the who? In the uh, group who were sent the video and the messages from uh, Galerme would immediately that hurts my soul, bro. That shit is so insane. Would flee the scene of the murder. My soul just like passed out for a second, bro. After, found the dead body and called police as well. Surprisingly, I want to know what happened to him. Hold on. To go on any manhunt to find this killer as Galerme turned himself in. Arresting officers noted that Galerme seemed relatively calm about the matter, <laughs> also stating that he seemed to understand the seriousness of the situation. When they asked what his motive was, Galerme oh said, quote, because I wanted to. Nigga, you, you can sit down, nigga. What's your reaction? <laughs> no, it's, it's your room. You can just stand there. That's why I'm like this so they can see you. Only get captured. Oh yeah, you can barely see you in the back. He 
would inform police that Tori said Lord Dreads meditated and had been meticulously planning this murder for close to two weeks. This nigga is insane, y'all. I don't know. Home and found the Shit like this. Wait, what? So that he referenced in the yeah, no, nah, bro. This is like a video of like killers, I guess. My dictionary. And in it, he and he sports that's crazy. Mm -hmm. It started off with the Madden nigga, the nigga that put that behind. Just my cousin. The details of exactly what Galera may meant by this isn't exactly clear. That's fucking insane, bro. To have consisted of incoherent ramblings, loosely detailing his depression and dissatisfaction <laughs> with life. Wrong. It has been reported <laughs> nah. that Galera may wanting to attack a Christian. No, no, not with this bitch. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. I go lie. Who's that random dick behind you? <laughs> oh me. Disorder and antisocial oh my goodness. Disorder. Man, watch out, bro. I mean, he probably do got disorders, but I'm tired of motherfuckers who got crazy motives and just the crazy train of thinking and just not know. I mean, I get it, but, like, I feel like they be trying to make people cope with that. Like, oh, he's not mentally there, so, like, he's, you know, he was probably going to do it because he's not mentally. Like, come on, there. You know how many people I know that's not mentally there ain't thinking about killing a single person or hasn't killed a single person? Like, Daniel Dietz yeah, bro. You know, plenty of women persons. Exactly. Gears of War competitive How many years? Like I'm in a forever. I didn't, I didn't even, I ain't gonna lie, I didn't see. But tell me why they looked up my idea just because they lost to me, but all the time, I'm coming to get you, I was so scared. No, bro, people do that. I've had somebody try to leak my stuff. I have a video about it. I don't know if you remember. Do you remember that one time I made the video, um, and then you were, you're in my Discord, so you be seeing. The one time I made a video on how I was playing against some dudes and I beat both of them and then they came to the discord they were talking in that video they were talking about leaking my IP and leaking all types of shit like just because I beat them and they were just talking shit to me the whole time then when I left the match finally they came to my discord yeah they came to the discord it was like blue come back to bro I didn't know you were tall dark and handsome all this weird shit bro I was like yeah this people be weird like people are really weird and they will go to weird extents honestly had been described by his friends and competitors as one of the nicest guys. Got them to court the hell of weird. Yeah, bro, Aside people are weird as hell. Gamer and they were, they will come to these extents like just for no reason. Buddy, which was a nickname that his friends and competitors gave him simply because yeah, he was such a crazy. kind person. Yep. In addition to frequenting tournaments, Daniel also streamed live on Twitch playing games like destiny and titanfall and unfortunately for daniel it would be a gaming related interaction that would ultimately put him in the situation that leads to his death in atlanta georgia on the night of september 12th of 2014 daniel was playing games with some of his friends when he told them that he'd be right back he then steps outside to meet a couple that he had gotten in contact with over craigslist apparently daniel had made plans to meet with this couple and sell them his playstation 4. the console was relatively new on the market and was difficult to find. Daniel would meet up with this couple in the parking lot of his Sandy Springs apartment at approximately 9.30 p.m. At this rendezvous point, he would meet the individuals he had been communicating with on Craigslist. Those individuals being 20-year-old Nathaniel Vivian and 16-year-old Kayla Dixon. The girl's 16-month-old baby was brought along as well. However, what you might have put together by this point is that the couple that wanted to do this PlayStation transaction at 9.30 at night, they didn't have the best intentions. As a matter of fact, Nathaniel had been meticulously planning a robbery with Kayla for over a week by this point. Apparently, Nathaniel, low on money, had actually recently sold his own PlayStation 4 to pay rent and wanted to get another console to replace it. He thought the best way to do so was to sucker somebody in on Craigslist and steal it from them. In the planning of the robbery, Nathaniel even Bro, said it ain't, it's like never that deep. to rob someone on YouTube. His intention for Devious organizing the oh, no. <laughs> meet was very clear. After the group meets up and exchanges pleasantries, the wildin', bro. all that over a PlayStation? PlayStation in Daniel's hands. And it's at this point where Nathaniel lunges towards Daniel and grabs it, trying to pull it out of his hand. So Nathaniel quickly grabs the console and tries to rip it away, but Daniel resists and actually puts up a fight, not having any of this robbery. And seeing that Nathaniel was getting overpowered by Daniel, that's when Kayla comes into play. Wow. Also, Nathaniel was just a weak nigga trying to take a PlayStation 2. So the girl had to... But this not really an eSport murder. I ain't gonna lie. This is a PlayStation 4 murder. Because they wanted to rob a nigga for a PlayStation. And I guess the, the nigga's just a weak nigga, I guess. You try to rob a nigga, but you weak too? Come on now. Come on now. I wonder what gay here trying to play. Bro trying to play 2K. No, dead ass. Because like, if you're going to sell your PS4 for rent, 
and then the best way you think of getting another one is robbing a nigga. And then you get basically overpowered by the nigga you trying to rob. That's insane. You a weak nigga. Like, <laughs> at this point, where Kayla reaches in, what you gotta be to get glove box and pulls out a twenty-five caliber pistol. She said, "Damn, my boyfriend losing." Bro, at this point, just go to work. No, dead ass. And pulls the trigger. The bullet Bro was missing out on all the raids. <laughs> Bro was trying to get his XP. Oh, damn. Fall to the ground, breathless. Nathaniel quickly scoops up the PlayStation, hops into the vehicle, and this would-be Bonnie and Clyde flee the scene, leaving Daniel for dead. Nearby residents heard the gunshot and notified police. Officers would arrive to find Daniel's dead body. Meanwhile, Nathaniel and Kayla were on the way to the hospital themselves to get Nathaniel's shot hand looked at. After arriving and showing doctors the injury, they made up a fake story explaining what had happened. Stating that they were in fact also oh, they stupid too, and that Nathaniel had been shot in the process. Since Daniel told medical staff that he had been shot as a result of a crime, police were notified in this matter, and they were able to put two and two together here and realize that the guy was full of shit, and he actually got the injury from, you know, Kayla shooting at Daniel, the guy that they just actually robbed. This resulted in Nathaniel and Kayla confessing and admitting that they were responsible for the death of Daniel. Both were arrested in Northside Hospital and were booked in Fulton County Jail. The district attorney's office would later announce that despite Kayla being a teenager, she would be tried as an adult. And before you knew it, these botched robbers were facing murder charges. With Daniel being somewhat of a popular figure in the esports community, news of his death spread quickly. KL Arctic Smith, Daniel's friend, teammate, and the last man to ever speak with him, set up a GoFundMe account to help with funeral costs. This GoFundMe eventually raised close to $23,684. KL Smith also made a tribute video expressing his sorrow for losing his friend as well. Uh, one of our teammates was, uh... Oh, that's why it was here, because he was an esports player. <clears throat> Robbed. And uh, he resisted the robbery and was shot and killed. And wow, yeah, I can't watch this no more, y'all. That's where the esports tie in. Okay, yeah, exactly. Because at first I was confused. I was like, this just sounds like a a robbery going wrong. But it plus the, he was an esports player. That's crazy. I want to know how. I might just get to the game, y'all. This is a forty-four minute. We twenty-five minutes in, yeah. Um, I will have the link in the description of the video that I post though, so y'all can go finish the video if y'all want to watch it. We about to we about to switch over in a second though. That's tough as hell though. Um, I might start off with Resident Evil and then start to and then go to uh, Zelda. I don't know yet. I'm thinking about it. Um, yeah, I might start with Resident Evil because I played that game before and I feel like I'm gonna spend less time on it so. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm gonna let this teammate is is full. Oh, uh, what's this League of Legends? Who had being one of eventually caught the attention of Counter Logic Gaming, a professional esports organization, and Counter Logic would give Ilion, aka Double Lift, his first big break in the esports scene, signing him to their gaming org. He was now a pro gamer, despite having success in oh, his man. personal struggles. He the first one with an expression, and it looked like it's like it's hard to do too. Like most of these niggas are like. It's hard for them to express. Like the first two niggas, they had like straight blank faces. Like, you can tell that most of these watch the back. Ooh, 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 ooh. There we go. Yeah, you can tell that most of these niggas just didn't have no emotion. Like not a thought in that brain, bro. Not a good thought in that brain. Parents weren't supportive of his gaming career choice and felt like he was pursuing an esports career against their wishes. They wanted him to go to college and get a more traditional job. Ilion was resistant though and wanted to prove to his family that gaming. I heard that's pretty like in the Asian community. I heard that's really prominent too. So like I understand that. Ilion was invited to his first major League of Legends. But like I'm scared to know like what tournament taking place him over. in Sweden. His parents were strongly against him attending and even allegedly said that if he went he would die. But eventually they would allow Ilion to go to this Swedish tournament mm. and that's thanks to Ilion's older brother Ehong talking them down and talking some sense into them and making them realize the opportunity that their son had. Ilion has once reflected on this moment, stating, I think my older brother is like the most influential figure in my life.
thanks to his older brother Ilion if you win you die okay I want to lose now on me I'm throwing the game or or either that or I'm a real nigga he got to fight me about it on me unless he got the blick right there on him yeah I throw I throw in a massive verbal argument with Ilion's mom calling her son lazy and worthless and kicking him out of the house for wow after being kicked out Ilion would take to reddit and vented his frustrations to his fans in this post, Ilion states, quote, My mom is a first-generation Chinese immigrant, and she basically adheres to every single Asian parent stereotype out there. Ilion's Reddit post detailing him getting kicked out because of his pro-gaming aspirations would go somewhat viral. Fans and Redditors would chip in to get the now homeless league star back on his feet, in an amount that totaled over $1,000. Around this time, Ilion also got a gig writing educational League of That's Legends crazy. content for Team Curse Gaming. Quote, I pretty much made half of the guides for that site. I was just super happy and I could finally pay rent that month. Making a yeah, he's making money now, bro. His own, he fully cut off contact with his parents. And after cutting them out of his life... See, look, it seemed like, other than the if you win, you die thing, it seemed like he was going in the right direction, basically, as far as his life. His career only prospered further. In League of Legends, Ilion developed what has been called a bad boy persona and was known for being quite the trash talker. I don't even think they're that great. I just think everyone just sucks. In 2013, he's responsible for other... Bro, imagine being a trash talker on League of Legends, Dota. History, that phrase being That's crazy. That everyone else is trash. Either one of those games. How good is it to get a pentacle at the LCS? Well, yeah, you're LCS. not good at League of Legends. LCS it technically was. Okay. Because it's North America. <laughs> everyone else is trash. Right here on the street. <laughs> everyone else is trash. Thanks to numerous League tournament victories, Ilion, a.k.a. Doublelift, would become a superstar in the esports industry. Everyone else is trash. years passed and Ilion became more numb to the fame and money, he began getting curious in regard to what his family was up to. In a 2015 interview done with Machinima, Doublelift said that he eventually would like to go back to his parents and just be a son again. I don't have to butt heads with my parents every other day. That's so stupid. I can listen to them a little bit and still do my own thing sometimes. Um, he seemed like a regular kid for a long time. Stuff like that, so that neither of us are happy. I just want to go back to them and just like, mm, just be their son one day. You know? This is inter This one is interesting because he seems yeah. very normal compared to the other right two that we saw the first two. And around this time, it said that Double Lift reached out to them and was able to come to a sort of tentative peace with them. Quote: Today, I realize I still love my mom. Guess family really is forever, even if I spent 10 years angry with them. Ilion would re-enter the gaming space with a newfound vigor, winning numerous tournaments over the next several years. Fast forward to 2018's League Championship Series. He would go on to help defeat Cloud9's team in the quarterfinals and the Echo Fox team in the semifinals in the League Championship. But just a week before the League of Legends World Championship Finals were to take place, Double Lift was hit with a life-changing tragedy. On March 31st of 2018, Double Lift's 30-year-old brother, Ehong, would find himself in a verbal argument over the phone with his parents. Apparently, Ehong was in an emotionally sensitive state after his girlfriend had just broken up with him. In an effort to console the man, Ehong's mother and father would travel to his home. After his parents arrived, Ehong made it clear he didn't want any assistance and became combative towards them. It's at this point where Ehong grabs a butcher knife and chases the family out into the street, where he would then stab both of them. His mother died almost immediately from the attack, and the father was critically injured. After stabbing his mother and what father, Doublelift's brother would then flee the scene and attempt to carjack a bystander who was sitting in his car. Eong attacked the man with the knife through his window, but fortunately this bystander was able to fend him off and escaped with minor injuries to his arm. Deputies responded to a 911 call regarding a domestic disturbance and reports of a man wielding a knife in the street. They arrived shortly after to find the bodies of Doublelift's parents. Eong was found not far away from the crime scene near the Ortega Highway, the man standing eerily still holding a bloody knife. Ehong was arrested without incident oh, and man. taken to Orange County Jail. Double Lift's mother, who was 59 years old at the time, was pronounced dead at the scene. His father was wounded but managed to survive. He was taken and hospitalized. And I know that's so heartbreaking for him. Double Lift would get a phone call from authorities regarding this incident just moments after winning the league semifinals. He had to skip the fanfare and fan meetups and head straight to the hospital to check on his father. 
Elyon would issue the following statement over social media. This weekend, I received some terrible news. My brother attacked both of my parents with a knife. As a result of this attack, my mom passed away and yeah, my dad so was seriously hurt and is now recovering in hospital. I'm still processing this news and joining up with my dad and little brother to make sure they're okay and the proper arrangements are being made. I'll likely be quiet on social media while I work through this. I hope you all understand and support me as you always have in the past. Bro, imagine winning a tournament and hearing that shit. Have asked what drove e Hong to commit his brutal attack. This is a question authorities have struggled to answer, and to this day, yeah, their brother look a little crazy too. I ain't gonna lie. Established. The despair caused by the recent breakup with his girlfriend was certainly a contributing factor, but that alone doesn't fully explain the attack. The complicated family struggles in the Pang home have been well documented by Ilion, and perhaps there is something to that. And there very may well have been an undiagnosed mental disorder at play here as well. Anything at this point, though, is just speculation. On April 2nd of 2018, Yi Hong Peng was charged with murder, attempted carjacking, as well as two attempted murder charges, and was facing 44 years to life in prison. His bail was set to $1 million. Meanwhile, despite going through the death of his mother, Doublelift announced that he would still participate and attend in the league finals against 100 Thieves team, a tournament that Doublelift and his team would win. Damn, bro just started getting blessings after that. That's crazy. He deserved that. That's a lot to go through in such a... Yeah, it's so fucked, bro. That's so much to go through in such a short amount of time. Despite the adversity of such a devastating event, Ilion was able to continue to thrive in the league world. So far in his career, Ilion has won eight championships. Wow, good on him. Good on him. He signed a contract with 100 Thieves to play for the 20 That's fire. Season. The trial for Double Lift's brother, E Hong Peng, is still ongoing. The man has pled not guilty. Jury trial is scheduled for April 24th of 2023. That's too close to my birthday, ain't I? Mean, good on him. Alright, I ain't gonna watch the last one. All this shit satisfied. So yeah, that's why I'm not gonna watch the last one, bro. I'll switch this shit, bro. Uh this one is going on in the channel though. Uh yeah, that's crazy as fuck, bro. I don't know. I can Like I said, bro, that's um you feel me? Good on him for being able to thrive through all that and, you know, still work through it. And still, you know, just still win tournaments and all types of shit because me, my brain would be so fucked up. Like, especially after I just won a tournament and then you just hear that news right then and there. It's a big tournament at that. So, like, you just won one of the biggest tournaments in your life and then you hear that news right after. And it's like, that's nuts. I don't even know what I'll be doing. 